Good evening, everyone. It is a delight to see you all again. Uh, oh my goodness, it, it, you know, it hasn't been, well, I guess it has been because we didn't have a psychic hour in December, did we? We skipped over that month because of the holidays. And so our last psychic hour was in November. And oh my God, I have missed you. <laughs> you guys are absolutely amazing and you're fun. And uh, I can't believe almost two months has gone by since, since we've all been here together. Uh, as I look down our group of people, oh, I see so many people that have uh, been here before. I see a few new faces, which are really fun. I always enjoy that. Uh, lots of my students, even a couple of the people who teach my Anastasi system of psychic development are here. So we, we're just going to have this absolutely amazing, fun night tonight. And I want to wo welcome you all back without any further ado. Happy, happy, happy 2023. Glad to see you all here. So just to give you a little bit of an overview before I go over what's here on my screen, which I always like to do, I call that housekeeping. But just to kind of tune you in, especially if you're one of my new people here, I do these monthly, except for December, <laughs> okay? And so we, we get to enjoy our company every month. They're always free. This is, I kind of think of this as my gift to you and it's a lot of fun to boot. I also give you the opportunity. I figure if you're coming and you're giving me your time, well, you deserve to ask, to answer a, to have me answer a question for you. So everybody who's on the call is going to get an opportunity to ask a question, but these sessions are only one hour long. So here's the rule concerning that. First of all, Nobody can send me a question before the session because, frankly, I'm not going to tune in. My guides are not here until I click that button on at 9 o'clock. So no questions get answered before the session. I will answer as many questions as I can during the psychic hour, and sometimes that's only three, sometimes it's seven or eight. It really depends on how quickly my guides are moving and how deep those questions are. Because while they're answering everyone else's question, they're also tracking your mind and your experience and talking to your guides. And they're not just giving answers to the person I'm reading. They're also giving answers to all of you. So it's important to listen to every question because all of those questions might pertain to you in your life, not just to the person who's on the line with me asking that question. Now, when I said you're all going to get a chance to ask a question, I mean that as a specific question for you. So if you are not one of the people called tonight and you stay with me through the hour, my gift to you is that you get to send me a simple question. You can either send that to Lisa, S-A Inc. at AOL.com. That's Lisa's email. Or you can send it directly to me through the email provided on this website. Okay. So you're going to be able to ask a simple question. When I say simple, a question like, tell me about my life. That's just not a simple question. A question like, uh, am I going to sell my house? Now, that's a really good, simple question. You'll get a yes or a no, and you'll get the dynamics and the circumstances surrounding the sale, which is kind of nice to know. So simple, direct, makes it easy for my guides. Now, here's what you need to do when you either get called on by Lisa or when you send me your question at the end of the call. You need to give me your first name. You need to give me the state that you're from or the country you're from because we are all over the world. You need to give me your astrological sun sign because armed with that I can give you all kinds of good information. And you also need to ask obviously your simple question, your direct question. I also would like to know for everybody here when you come on what you're most grateful for in your life right now. Uh, that, that attitude of gratefulness really keeps us on track with generating a positive energy in our life and in our community and connecting with other people. So it's just a plain good thing to do. Um, if you saw my house all over my home, I have little signs, gratitude, grateful, thankful, uh, because it's a reminder that no matter what's going on in life, I'm always going to try, not always successful, but always going to try 
to look at the upside of it, the things that bring happiness and joy to me from whatever it is that I'm doing. And I would like for all of you to be able to do that too, because it really does bring light and a, a feeling of wonder into your life again. So those questions, if you are writing them to me, emailing them to me, have to reach me before 9 p.m. tomorrow evening, Eastern time, in order for me to answer them. And please do give me a week or two weeks. I'm usually faster than that, but just in case I get backed up with a lot of questions, a week or two weeks to answer them. Okay, but I do get back to everybody. So let me take a look at what's going on that I have here on our PowerPoint. Not as much this month as usual, but I just want to go over this with you. First of all, I'm sure you've already opened my website. See the cursor over here on the right pointing to www.sandianastasi.com. You can always find out when the next Psychic Hour is, what I'm doing, register with the Psychic Hour, and all of my other classes there as well. This box that says download the app, this is very important. We have some kind of odd things going on in our world right now. And quite frankly, uh, every month that we still have internet and that the telephones are still working, I'm really kind of happy. Just in case some of the websites go down, get the app. Because if you have an app for Kajabi for my website on your telephone, you are as long as you have phone service, you're going to be able to get on these psychic hours and you're going to be able to interact with us. And you're going to be able to see my whole website too. The app is a really good app. It works. So get it, please. It's free. I also want you to be aware that along with the psychic hour, when as soon as you sign up for my website, which you needed to do, or sign up for my, e my uh, newsletter, and you needed to do that to get the invitation to the psychic hour, so I know all of you are getting the newsletter, as soon as you sign up for that, you automatically are given an invitation to my open community. Now, that's a community where you can post your experiences, your thoughts, you can say whether you did or didn't like the psychic hour, you can talk about a question you had that you want to open to the other people who were on the hour. Now, mind you, that's not just for people who are on the psychic hour. Anyone who has signed up for my newsletter, now that's it's still a private community, it's not open to the world at large, but if they've signed up for my newsletter, they can go on the open forum. So be careful you don't post, you know, things about your sex life and things like that, <laughs> okay? But certainly it is a forum where anyone who wants to study psychic development or has an interest in tarot or has an interest in the psychic hour or has some unusual experiences or dreams that you want to pop out there and see what people think about. This is a place for like-minded people for you, and it's very safe because Lisa and I monitor it, okay? So take advantage of it. It's yours. That forum has been added in there for you, okay? Now, if you missed my big webinar that I held in December, um, what's happening in 2023, it is now for sale on my website. It's only $25. Um, folks, I really, 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 really recommend that you sign up for it, that you purchase it if you haven't already, because you can tune into it and go back and watch it over and over again all through 2023. And it really does get your finger on the pulse of what's going on in your own life, in the world. And it's such a reasonable amount to pay for that. It's a relief. It's a stress reliever because no matter what's happening, you know ultimately it's all going to work out and you even know how for the most part. My guides are really that good. So here it is, what's happening in 2023. It's on sale for $25. You can purchase it right on my website. If you are a VIP, that means you belong to my membership. Our next coaching call for VIPs is April 13th. 2023, 7 p.m. Please make a note of that. The next Psychic Hour, now that's for all of you who are here with me tonight, is on February 26th of 2023. Folks, if you haven't yet registered for it, please do register. I expect that what happens every year is that as the year wears on, we get more and more and more people, and after a while, it does become difficult to be able to sign on uh, to the platform that I use, that which only takes up to 100 people, and we have sometimes got more people than that on the call. So uh, today we actually have a fairly small group, 
So uh, we're, we're, it looks like 44 people or 46 people, and we, we frequently are more than twice that. So get signed up early to make sure that you can get in. And as you did, come to the session early to make sure you get on in case extra people are signed up. Now here are my specials. I always like to include January or the, the month we're coming out of. In this case, it's January and also the next month, which is February. Let's look at January first. We only have a couple of days left to get these specials, but uh, the first one I'm not cutting off. Uh, I won't cut off until like mid-February, but I'm saying join my psychic development program that starts January 25th. Obviously, we passed January 25th. We had our very first meeting of that class last Wednesday. It was dynamite. Um, my friends, it is a very small group. Again, that could have something to do with the economy. It may also have to do with me being a little slow getting uh, getting my the word out about it this year. Um, but that is an advantage to everybody who's in the group. So this wonderful small group of people is the ideal group for you to join if you really want to study psychic development and do it in a group of people that is, I never take more than 30 people anyway, but this group only has about 15, so it's really small, and that means almost one-on-one -on -one attention. It's really, really going to be fun. Um, I will continue to take people right up through the end of Psychic Development 1, which looks like it ends, hmm, what does Psychic Development 1 end? Do, 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 do. I guess the, the last, uh, it ends on the 15th. So right up until the 15th of, of January, uh, no, pardon me, of February, I will continue to allow people to come in because up through the end of Psychic Development 1, it's, it's possible to make up that, uh, that foundation of Psychic Development 1 and go on to Level 2, Level 3, Level 4, Level 5, Level 6 with the rest of the group. But once we get into Psychic Development Level 2, it becomes much more difficult to do that. So if you're interested right now, you can still jump right in and it won't feel like you're behind at all. You'll make that up very, very quickly. It's, it's easy. Okay, so you can find out all about how to register for that on my website. Again, I highly, highly, highly recommend it. And this particular class this year is going to be mind-blowing. Uh, because the people in it are just great and it's a small group. So this is the one to join if you want to join something special. Now, what's coming in the next three months? That's my reading special for next month. And I'm offering it at $250. So that's $50 off of my, my regular reading cost, which is $300. So if you're interested in getting a reading with me, um, that is discounted by $50. The time to register for it is like tonight and tomorrow because you've got to be able to get that registration by the end of January because this one is going away. You won't see that special again um, for, for quite a long time, okay? That's not something which uh, I run frequently. Okay, now in February, I would love for you to celebrate Valentine's Day with a special reading by me and my guides for you and your soulmate, your life partner, or any other person that you'd like to explore your relationship with. And uh, I don't have to tell you, those of you who've been with me for a long time, how deep my guides can go into your relationship. We can look at it from a spiritual point of view. We can look at it from a, what are your obstacles? What are you working out? What are you accomplishing together? Uh, it's interesting because they, my guides, you know, they know you because they're talking to your guides. And they just get right in there and they talk about the major issues. You don't even have to tell them what they are. You can, you can say, okay, this is what I'm working on. But it's absolutely amazing how, how well they can define a relationship and help you to get the very best out of it. So if you would like to celebrate Valentine's Day that way, you can be on the call there by phone or by, by go to meeting like this. You can either be on the call with your loved one or you can have it recorded and you know listen, re listen to it when you get the recording with them. So there are a lot of different ways that you can you can handle that call, and they're all good. Okay, talk to Lisa, look at my website, and she will tell you what you need to get to her in order for you to set yourself up for that reading. It's um, if you book for a half an hour, it's three hundred dollars. If you book for the hour, it's five hundred and fifty dollars. 
and it is not the relationship reading that's on my website. This is oh so, so much deeper. Um, if you look at what's on my newsletter about this, you'll see how much deeper it goes. It's pretty amazing. Now, I'm also offering a personal computerized astrological spiritual path report all through February. Um, this is a report. It's not a reading by me or by Lisa. It's a report. And just please be sure to include your birth day, time, and place of birth when you order it right on the website. The cost is only $29.95. If you're pressed for money and you still want to take a look at a good analysis of yourself from a spiritual point of view, what's the path that you're on, what, what are you working towards, what things are going to open up for you, what are your roadblocks to your own development, this report has all of that. So you'll enjoy it. Okay, I'm done. Lisa, I am ready to take questions. Who's who's got their hand up? Who has a question for me? Okay, the first person of 2023 is going to be, <clears throat> excuse me, I hope I pronounce this correctly. Felice. You are unmuted. So if you can unmute yourself. Hello. Hello there. Yes. You pronounced it correctly. Thank you. <laughs> it's a beautiful name. It's a beautiful name. Thank you. I was going to be a Paula until I popped out my dad said. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. Um, first of all, I'm happy to be here first time. And uh, the question I have is, I was going between three of them, um, but I think the one that's most pressing, even though it might not be the most important one, the most pressing one is about, um, and I never ask about romance or a boy or anything like that, but that's what I'm gonna be asking about. Um, if, if there's a deeper meaning, a deeper reason that this happened. Yeah. That, yeah. Yeah, and but you, you, you know, sorry, you already know about it. <laughs> okay, so this, this is going, this is going to be one of those questions where your answer is a little bit redundant to what you already know. I think it's just that you need to hear from somebody else. Um, you had really outgrown one another. Okay. Yeah. And no, yeah. you know, nobody yeah. wants to know that. Okay. Um, one of the reasons why so many relationships break up in a hurtful, angry way with people throwing names at each other is because they, you know, our society says, and I'm not, by the way, I love marriage, I'm married, but our society says that when you bond with somebody, it has to be for life. And right. there's an old saying that some relationships are for a day, some of them are for a season, some of them are for a lifetime. I don't, know, I don't remember who wrote that, but what wisdom, what absolute wisdom. You know, when we get into a relationship, all of us think that it's going to be permanent, that it's going to be forever. But different people have to grow, and sometimes they grow differently. It's actually, I think, pretty rare that two people will get together and their life journey is tied at the hip permanently unless one sacrifices everything for the other. And you do find that. You find a lot of people who are in their 60s and 70s, and everybody honors them because they've spent 50 years together, and you say, oh, how wonderful that is. And it might have been wonderful. Maybe they did augment one another's growth. That does happen. It's rare, though. Usually, when that relationship turns to 40 or 50 years, one person has sacrificed everything so that the other person is able to grow. And the one who does the sacrificing, what is their growth? Their growth is learning to sacrifice for another person. So it's not all lost, it's not bad, but if both people are to grow and experience their spiritual lessons on this planet, to, to be who they're supposed to become, then the only way you can do it and stay together is if you take turns. First, <laughs> they grow, then you grow. Then they grow, then you grow. And you have yep. to agree that it's oh. my turn to support you. Okay. Oh, I had my notes. My your turn to support me. That way, both people can grow. 
but to have a situation where both people are having the exact same soul lesson, the exact same spiritual journey, the exact same need to unfold, does it happen? Of course. The universe has room for all possibilities, but it really is very, very rare. And yet most of us get together in our you know, late teens, or early 20s, and we're so in love and we're absolutely certain that our partner is our soulmate, and they very, may very well be, but we tack on to it. They're supposed to want the same things I do, envision the same future I envision, have the same life plan I plan. You get my point? So we try I, to force them yeah. into our mold. Okay. It's, it's real. It's very funny because it, like what you're saying, it does. I thought mm, that doesn't pertain to me, but I'm like, it does pertain to me. It's someone I knew when I was 16 and we, he was my brother's best friend. And then, but I, I kind of liked him, but I didn't, he was my younger brother's best friend. So I really didn't pay much attention to him, even though I kind of did. And then 30 years went by and we just, you know, saw each other again for the first time in last summer after 30 years. And I did exactly that. I kind of just expected it to go one way and 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 it didn't and they're really just very volatile but it's very i'm growing i'm growing so much from this mm -hmm. so i just was wondering if there was any kind of reason that that at the very beginning that i kind of i noticed him in a way but didn't but it was enough to make me think now like wow there was some kind of like chain reaction happening to make this happen where it is now. Well, so. there, certainly there was, first of all, there was unfinished business there. You, you folks, when you were young, you might not even realize it because he was not connected to you directly. So, and you had another love interest of your own that you were pursuing. So you were kind of given the brush, but he was <laughs> generating that romantic interest back then because you were the girl that was his best friend's sister, you see? Yeah. So, yeah. What happened is you met to get that was unfinished business okay you you meet together and he still has this infatuation with his best friend's sister and psychically you feel that as an energy of attraction and so you're definitely going to be re attracted to that in return now does that mean the relationship can't go anywhere oh no it doesn't it doesn't mean that at all but it does mean that the initial attraction is based on something past now you have to discover what's there in the now. And yes. you assume that person is who they used to be. For God's sake, he's 30 years older and you didn't really know him that well back then. You don't know who mm -hmm. this person is. You can't have <laughs> expectations that he's going to fit into your world, just like he can't expect it, that you're gonna fit into his. You have to respect one another's space. Yes, exactly, exactly. You're right, you're right, I did know, I didn't, I did have an idea. I just needed to hear it from someone else. You're absolutely 100% spot on. <laughs> and I love it. I've got to tell you, you, you know, you are very psychic. You're aware of that. And one of the reasons you were attracted to him to begin with is because he was generating the energy of attraction. You responded. Okay. That's an empathic connection. Now he's not sure what he wants. Mm -hmm. He most certainly doesn't want to be trapped. And yep. <laughs> did not give me your sun sign, nor did you tell me what you are most grateful for, nor did you tell me where you're calling from. And I want to know all of those things. <laughs> oh, I thought we would do that when we emailed you. I apologize. My apologies. Oh. I'm a Pisces, <laughs> and right now I live in Hot Springs, Arkansas. <laughs> okay. Well, nice to know you from Arkansas. And, and let's take a quick look at Pisces and look at what's going up at Pisces, because that's going to give some insight into Pisces and Virgo and Gemini and Aquarius, all four of the mutable signs. Pisces is a mutable sign. So in this chart, which is a throwaway one night chart, it's called a horary chart. It's good for everybody on the call tonight. And here's Pisces, which starts in the middle here of the sixth house, which means that I don't know if you met this guy through work, but it looks like it, um, either your work or his work. But it also looks like you, you know, you're kind of either cohabitating already or you're practically cohabitating because this talks about you being um, very comfortable in the physical space of each other. And all the people who are on the call who either are Pisces or are mutable signs, 
whether you're in a comfortable relationship or an uncomfortable one, you're still comfortable with that person in your home situation. Isn't that interesting? Or in your work situation. It yep, feels yep. like this is where, this is our comfort zone, okay? Um, also, those of you who are Pisces, Gemini, Sages, or Virgos, you're looking, if you're in a relationship at all, and this could be a relationship, not just a love relationship, but a relationship with a business partner or with a colleague or, or an associate, it could be like me and Lisa, somebody who works for me, who I'm friends with. The thing is you're looking for long term, okay? You're looking for something which gives stability to your work, to your life, to your work experience, to your home life. So all of you are fitting the bill for that. And meanwhile, guess what? See this is a square to Gemini, okay? Another, another mutable sign. And this is in the house that talks about travel, and running away <laughs> and needing space and and not wanting to talk and then when you do talk getting into arguments okay um, yeah so guess what if you're a gemini or a pisces or a sag or a virgo this is your experience with your relationship right now okay he's a gemini and i'm a pisces of course <laughs> yeah there it is in the chart and yeah. the thing is, all of, all of you mutable people, I'm one of them too, I'm a Gemini, right now you really have to have a lot of patience with your relationships with all of them, okay? Um, I have a relationship with a good friend of mine right now that, and this is a woman, another woman, and she's got all kinds of garbage hitting the fan in her life. So we used to go out and shop and have lunch and we can't do any of that anymore. And it's very frustrating because I've lost my my shopping partner, okay? Well, I've got to be patient, don't I? It's the same energy. So whether this is a love relationship, a friend's relationship, um, I was trying to get together with my good friend, Lisa, and she said, Sandy, I'm sorry, I'm watching football. Do you see it? Okay. <laughs> yeah. This is, so right now you're going to be very frustrated because your, your boyfriend doesn't know what he wants. The only thing he's really sure about is that, guess what? He doesn't want to be tied at the hip. He doesn't right. want to be living together or tied down. No, he, he doesn't. Over and spend <laughs> nights, but you better believe he's going to keep his own space. All right. He's, I don't know if you're aware of it, but he's still getting over a past relationship that oh, he's he is. not sure he's done with. You don't want to hear that, but it's true. Oh, that's, and that's what I, 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 I've, I acknowledge yeah. that. I, and, and that's what I'm grateful for, Sandy. I'm grateful for the fact that I'm able to look at this now through different eyes, yet my mm -hmm. eyes, and, yeah. and see what my part is and what, instead of putting the blame on, on someone else, like look at my core beliefs. So yeah. that's what I'm grateful for. I'm grateful for this opportunity to grow right now. This is my most and thing I'm grateful for. Is, and that's what this is. It's unlikely that you and he are going to have this long-term relationship that you desire. Okay. Right. You may have a long-term friendship, but the two of you really are radically different. And there's some yeah. underpinning here too. I, I've got to ask this question: What happened with your brother? Um. For from which at what point of time? <laughs> where, when it where, comes. Where are you at right now with your brother? Um. Oh. Mm, that's the. Um, realize we used to be best friends and yeah. then um i believe that our mo our mother had something that brought us apart and which i needed to accept um i've always been the one who's been more more accepting of people's situations and more patient i guess with my brother um then he got married and his wife did not allow him to have friends or relationship with me supposedly and my brother moved out here with my dad after he was getting divorced out here meaning hot springs village i came to visit and my and i decided to buy a house here then too and so we were we were getting really close again and then i just had a situation last week where i completely blacked out and apparently i was very 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 mean to him and i don't remember anything of it nothing so today was the first day that we we actually got together we had lunch at my dad's house and we were it was nice, you know, it wasn't like all buddy, buddy, chummy, chummy, I love you, you're my best friend, brother type of thing, mm -hmm. but it, 
but we made but we made definitely made some progress good so the reason i asked is this is the card now i'm going to turn it right side up so you can see what it is this card is a death card and it was upside down first card i pulled for you which told me that your relationship with your brother's former friend yes that is his awful. former friend it, it is his, it used to be his best friend it used to be his former friend i mean it right. used to be his best friend but now it's former absolutely right, right. it's because your your relationship with the friend is tied into your breakup of the relationship with your brother yes but yes logically you're pulling them all together because you're reaching back for something that has died yes this is very very 100 percent true and you're trying to give it a rebirth and what you're really trying to rebirth is yourself so the yeah. likelihood is that you probably aren't even going to continue to stay living where you're living you might but you're probably not going to continue the close relationship with your father and your brother that you'd hoped for. What you really did was you went back to your roots to consolidate, to feel safe, so that you could rebuild yourself, so that you can now create a life for yourself that is stable and fun and enjoyable and that you've planned, i.e., this is the fertile soil you've created yourself to grow from but it's not permanent soil. You okay. are amazing. Your guides are amazing. Yeah, Thank you. <laughs> they, are, they are fantastically good. <laughs> and you, you said that you, you went uh, back to where your father and your brother were living together, but your father, there's a man on the other side who tells me that he's your father, okay? So you figure that out. I don't think he is necessarily your biological father, but he's the guy who gave you your fathering when you were growing up. And so you can't really find what you're looking for physically where you're at, but you'll figure that out. Okay. You're, well, I just had that conversation today with, with the, with the boy too. That's, yeah. Yeah, that's amazing. <laughs> you're in a really good space. Give yourself credit for it and start to mark out your next steps in life because they're gonna be really good ones. Thank and remember, you. Guys, folks, pay attention to what I'm telling, what I'm talking to one client, one person on the call, because those bits of information are going to be reflected in your life if you're a Gemini, if you're a Virgo, if you're a Pisces, if you're a Sagittarius, you're going through these same kinds of things where you're stepping back into something which feels familiar in order to regroup, but you know it can't work out. You're gonna regroup and you're gonna move forward from that spot to something new. And it's all gonna be good as long as you're able to go with the flow. It's when you try to manhandle it and force it in a direction that it's not supposed to go that you get into trouble, okay? So thank you for beginning our, uh, our January 2023 calls on the psychic hour was such a really really interesting question thank you so much it was great to thank meet you. you i appreciate you i appreciate everyone thank you so much and lisa who is going to be our next caller before i call on the next caller just to avoid me getting 100 emails afterward <laughs> the next psychic hour is actually going to be february the 19th oh that's correct it's correct on your site. We okay. changed it. Yeah, yeah, we had it on 26. We had to change it. And it's I failed to change it on your calendar. So my apologies, Sandy. So everybody yeah. on the call, it is correct on the site when you go to register for next month. It's now correct oh. on your screen, too, at least for the rest of the hour. <laughs> yeah, correct. Right. The next uh, victim tonight. Yes. And by the way, it's not a football game. It's the NFL playoffs. <laughs> <laughs> the next person is Heather. Heather, can you unmute? Yes, I'm here. Hi, Heather. How are you tonight? Good. How are you this evening, Sandy? I'm very well, thanks. Good to speak with you. Thank you. Thank you for taking my question. Nice to meet you. I'm in Michigan. My sun sign is Aquarius, and 
trying to think of what the, it feels like you wanted another thing yeah. answered. What are you most grateful for right now? Oh, I'm grateful for my family. Most, most definitely my little family, my two dogs and my husband and myself. And we just have a, a beautiful little, you know, family unit. You are, that's great. You are wonderful. And it's nice that you recognize that, that specialness for that. So I'm glad you have that. And thanks for sharing about it. Um, what's your specific question? My specific question is just last week, my, the company that I work for has announced that they'll be cutting jobs. And I'm wondering if my head will be one of the heads that gets chopped. You know, you're going to laugh at this. My guides don't think you're going to get chopped. But they also think you wish you did. <laughs> 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 and they do see you sometime this year moving on to a new job, which will probably point you in a new direction because they see they're showing studies and education around you moving you to something new. Don't you love it? Interesting. Now yes. let's let's look at this horary chart here. Um, here's where Aquarius is. It's uh, the, the sun for Aquarius starts about halfway through the Leo house. Interesting. So you're kind of on a, a you Aquarians, Leos, Scorpios, and Taurians. Those are the fixed signs in the zodiac. You're kind of on a seesaw right now with so many things in your life. Do I like the job? Do I not like the job? Do I want to stay where I'm living? Do I not want to stay where I'm living? Do I put my money here? Do I put money there? You know, it's like there's the seesaw in almost every aspect of your life. This friend is really nice. Oh, she was a pain in the neck yesterday. It's like everything is like that. <laughs> okay. So here you are doing the seesaw routine. Um, you are concerned right now about, uh, about if you don't have children, I get the impression it's a tiny family, but you're concerned about your your fur babies, okay? And you're concerned about something that you have created that you've kind of given birth to in your life. I don't know if it's connected to the job that you're with or something else, but it's like you want to see that perpetuated. It's something you have ownership towards. And you also, and by the way, what I'm talking about again, it pertains to you if you're an Aquarian, a Leo, a Scorpio, or a Taurus. You're feeling this very deep sense of responsibility for whatever it is that has been, I'm going to use the term, entrusted to your care. Now, part of Aquarius also goes into this sixth house, which is the house of health. So it may very well be that you're either responsible for somebody that you have to care for, or that you, maybe it's the fur babies. Again, we have, this is also the house of pets over here in the sixth house. Um, or it could be that you're literally taking care of an older person could be a parent or a good friend but somebody that that you feel that they can't really do well unless you're there with them so there's a whole lot of responsibility going on in your life is what i'm saying and that responsibility comes from the job it comes from the husband it comes from the family around you it comes from you know all those things that you have given birth to in your life that you feel responsible for is this making sense to you I don't have an elder person that I'm caring for. My husband's health has always seemed to be better than my own. Um, the animals are doing great. I don't, I can't uh, place a finger on that at all. And it's probably Nothing connected to work. It's probably connected to work, all that sense of responsibility for you. Now for other people on the call, it might be connected to those other things, but for you, it's probably uh -huh. going to be to your day-to-day -to -day -to -day life, the work, that it's it's a stretch to get it all done, to take care of it, to, to if they're letting people go, what's happening to your job? You're now doing the job of six, you see? So the, yes. your, your, your workload increases, you get more and more work to do. But at the same time, somehow you feel, you're feeling responsible to the people. So here, here they are, they're downsizing and letting go of people, they're putting more pressure on you, or at least they're saying they're going to, and you want the job and you feel like they can't make it without you, so you really want to do more, but they're not doing more. See the way that, that balance comes back and forth again? So your yes. situation is mirroring a whole lot of people who are not just on this call, but all over the United States right now because of the economic struggles that we are having right now. 
Um, so you really, you know, you were a good person for us to, to call on because what you're dealing with and going through is uppermost in so many people's minds and experience right now. So you have to kind of step back and say, well, I'm going to branch over to here. Venus is in this house too, although it's in Pisces. What do you really want? Because while you're busy trying to hold on to the old, the new is creating itself. And it can't create itself unless your thoughts are clear on what you want. So be clear. Be clear on what you want in your life if you could have anything. And that would be from stuff to relationship to the job. Be clear on how you feel about what you want because you have the capacity to generate it. Um, something very interesting. This is a great opportunity. I was just looking at this. In fact, I love. I knew this call was going to come along because I was looking at this before the session this evening. The you're, you're aware that in astrology, you know, the Earth we, we use as astrologers. We use the Earth as where we live, as the center of the universe, not the sun. It's called geo geocosmic astrology. And then we look at all the planets as they go through the sky and how they're affecting what's here on the earth. We call those planets moving through the sky transits. You're aware of that. Everybody here knows that. So whenever I look at a horary chart like this, we're actually looking at transits that are going on for all of you right now. And all these planets are actually real planets that generate real energy and have a real effect on your life. So here's what I want to talk about. Pluto right now is 28 degrees of Capricorn and 36 minutes. There are only 30 degrees in the sign. When we begin February, just a couple of you know weeks away, during the middle of February, the middle of the month, Pluto is going to move out of Capricorn where it's been for 20 some odd years, and it's going to move into Aquarius. So folks, if one, if you are a Capricorn, a Cancer, could, could you put your uh, mic off so that we don't get that feedback for a minute? Because this is real important, okay? And I'll, I'll have you open it when I'm done. If you're a Capricorn, a Cancer, a Libra, or an Aries, life has been really, really, really difficult for the last 22, 23 years because Pluto has been making a very slow passage through your sun sign, and it's been transforming every part of your life. Now, you are about to get a respite because Pluto is going to move into Aquarius in the middle of February. It's going to stay there until June, though. And in June, it's going to retrograde back to Capricorn. So don't get really stupid about doing, oh, wow, I'm free until we get to next year. <laughs> okay? Because it's not completely done with you. But how this affects Aquarians, guess what? In the middle of the month, Pluto's going to move into the sign Aquarius. And then in June, it's going to back up. So guess what? Between February 15th and June 2nd, you Aquarians, Leos, Scorpios, and Taurians get to get a movie trailer of what is coming into your life for the next 24 years. You have any idea how important it is to keep that diary? Okay, please do. Now on June 2nd, Pluto's going to retrograde and you're going to lose your movie trailer. It goes away. So you only get this very brief period between February 15th and June 2nd to get a look at what's coming. So unmute now. Okay. You know to, you know to keep your diary, right? And you know that Based on what we're seeing here, there's going to be a lot of responsibility around you. If you yourself have health issues, it's very important for you to not put them on a back burner. Take care of them. It's also very important for you, and this is, again, if you're an Aquarian, a Leo, a Taurus, or a Scorpio, please, please, please look after yourself. Because you guys have a tendency to be so concerned with creating this perf perfect world where everything happens the way it should for everybody else. And it's important to be able to care yourself. So start putting yourself first, okay? 
at least for the time being, and then you can go back to creating that perfect world. But get in touch with what you want. That's so important because what you want over the next many years is going to radically change. It's almost like you're going to get what you want, but then you're going to really discover it might not be what you want. So be clear, investigate it, and think about it. Okay? Your specific question, did I hit it, or do you have another part of it you need to ask? No, you're, um, I'd like to know that I can continue on with life um, until I'm ready to make that change and not just, you know, two weeks yes. time, middle February, which, you know, you're set talking about the middle of February there. Yeah, um, that, through. you know, they could easily just say, you know, you're done. You know, nah. we don't need you anymore. Well, they could. But, uh, you know, that now we get into a whole different animal. You know, you're alive here and then you're alive there. That's what Esther Hicks says. She channels the Abraham group of spirits. She's right. I know because I talk to people who are alive there all the time. Okay. Most of you have guides who live on the other side. They see us. We don't see them because we're kind of deadheads. We don't really get to see most of us what's on the other side. But they get to see us. Mm -hmm. They connect with us. So guess what? I know a whole lot of, <laughs> this is going to sound terrible. I really do know a whole lot of dead people who are really good people and they still talk to us. <laughs> so guess what? Death is not a big deal. It's a transition from one dimension to another, from one plane to another. The hardest part about death is letting go of all the people that you love and care for who are here or the goals that you have or the things you want to achieve that maybe you have to wait for a while to achieve. But once you're on the other side, believe me, it doesn't feel so bad, okay? So let's let's not make death into a bad guy. Death is not the bad guy. We all do it. It's perfectly natural and normal. However, my guides don't believe it's your time, okay? <laughs> you may have to wait a Thank while you. for that. <laughs> okay? Yeah. Thank well. you. But do keep that diary, okay? And start, honest to God, this is happening to you because you put everyone and everything ahead of yourself. You know, that job in the office has to get done. So who stays late? You. That other person doesn't know they're too new. Gee, I can't do it. Who takes care of it? You. You fix it. Don't you? Yes. <laughs> yes. So what does it take to make you finally put you First, a health problem works every time. Really, yes. Your, your yes. higher self knows what it's doing. Oh, she's moving too fast. She's neglecting to take care of herself again. We'll make her sick so she has to. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Honestly, there's another thing that I want to touch bases on here. Um, the we're just beginning to hear things about this all over the news and every place else, but. Um, the there so, some of the some of the uh, shots that people took the the inoculations over the last couple of years had no bad effect they were perfect they were great others had bad stuff attached to them and so we're starting to find that some people are having all kinds of health issues because of having taken those shots and having taken the boosters now I think you want to know if you're one of them and my guides are saying no. Your health problems are not linked to that. Okay? Yes, I didn't take that. I, I actually, my guides told me not to take it. Good girl. So Good girl. I, I went through everything with my company and told them absolutely not. So, um, yeah, and I didn't yet, do it. And yet, I'm looking at this Saturn and this Venus here, and you have this real strong desire to help people. It's a big part of who you are. And you may very well be involved in the future with helping a lot of people who've got health problems because of what's been going on in our world, okay? So if you're looking at where to focus your efforts in the future, heal yourself first, then work on healing everybody else. I could see that being, that's who I am as a person. You've definitely nailed that on the head. I just don't know how it's gonna unfold. Good. You know, and that's that's good. You know, it's a yeah, good place to be. Good. Yeah, because the more flexible you are, the more you allow possibility to come into your life. 
And right now, that's exactly where you need to be. And folks, if you're one of those fixed signs, Aquarius, Leo, Scorpio, or Taurus, this is where you need to be, okay? So another really good question. Thank you so much for asking it. And uh, Lisa, I'm gonna try and have room for a last person here. Who's next? Well, lucky number three tonight is going to be Joseph. Joseph, can you unmute? Hello, Joseph. Yes, can. Hello, can you hear me? Yes. Yes, yeah, so really fast, thank you so much for all the work that you have done for the community and thank you so much for the strides and just everything. And I just wanna recognize you and give you your flowers. Um, thank you, thank you so much, you're a living legend. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I hail from Chicago, or I hail from Illinois, excuse me. Uh, my name is Joseph, I'm a Capricorn and I'm most grateful for personal fortitude. Well, you certainly needed it. Remember what I just said about Pluto going through Capricorn? Yes, hey, no, it's true. Anyone here who is a Capricorn, you guys, you guys had to hit the, the most intensely of everybody because it was in your sun sign, has been. But that Pluto transit also affected everybody who's a Cancer, everybody who's an Aries, and everybody who's a, Li a Libra. Those are the cardinal signs. And you guys were transforming yourselves from the bottom up for the last 20 years. Boy, do you know it. And it took enormous patience, didn't it? No, it's true. Yeah. And it took fortitude. It took hanging on. It took waiting. It took learning about things you didn't want to learn about. It took developing your intuition and saying, because your intuition was, one of the things Pluto does, by the way, is it develops your intuition. And so there you were knowing things that you weren't supposed to know and that you couldn't even talk about because everybody got mad at you when you did. <laughs> Okay, and, and you had 20 years of that, <laughs> okay? And it's almost done, won't be done until the end of this year, almost done. And then in 2000, and I'm gonna, in my editorial for, for uh, March, it, it will be, I will, um, I'll go over all of the dates and so forth. So you're gonna have to wait for there until March for it, but it's coming up. I'm gonna go over specifically when it changes direction and when you're, you guys are gonna really be done with it, okay? But just mm -hmm. for now, expect that you're still going to be dealing with it. Although right now it's trials play, you're good at Pluto, um, but you're going to be dealing with it until the very end of 2024. Mm. Mm -hmm. So you're not quite, yeah, you're not really. Now it's going to go back and forth between Aquarius and Capricorn. And believe me, you'll know when it's hitting you. Um, <laughs> but <laughs> yeah, you don't miss Pluto. It's, it's, it's sort of like a, a tidal wave hitting. So the thing is, you're going to know that it's it's in your sun sign, but you're a whole lot better at dealing with it now than you were 20 years ago. Okay. For Easy. Sure. Mm -hmm. Okay. So what's your specific question? Um, I guess for me, my question is relating, I guess, to my intuition and my connectivity to, I guess, my psychic awareness, because I feel like there's been some massive transformations, definitely in alignment with Pluto. And I felt like at first I was super like spot on. And then I noticed almost, I guess, as the tools are kind of acting as a barrier. So I, I don't know, I guess I'm just in a weird place. So I guess ultimately what I'm wanting to know is just get some more insight and clarity as to kind of what's going on in that regards, I guess, my psychic awareness. Well, that's a very, very good question. And and I hope you guys are gonna realize, I'm not, I'm gonna, what I'm gonna talk about is right now, it's gonna sound like a science fiction movie, but it's not, we're living it. Okay, you have to understand that just like our earth moves around the sun, everybody's aware of that. But what a lot of people don't realize is that our sun is actually moving through space, carrying all the planets with it. And its circumference goes around some central sun way, way out that scientists haven't even been able to pinpoint yet because the orbit is so, so large, but we're moving. And as we move through space, space is not flat, okay? Space is multidimensional. People think of it as three-dimensional. It's not, it's not just three-dimensional. It has thousands of dimensions. If you think of it, if you look at a circle and you look at all the different points or a, a globe actually, and you look at all the different points that a globe could have a piece on, right? 
that's how many dimensions there would be in our in our universe. This we we it's filled with dimensions, right? Well, our whole solar system is moving from the age of Pisces, which is the equivalent of one month in the great year as the sun moves around the universe. So we're moving from the age of Pisces into the age of Aquarius. Uh, don't you love that? More Aquarius stuff for our, our friend I just spoke with. So as we do this, as we move, we're not just changing words. It's not just a song. We're shifting dimensions. We're changing our dimensional reality. And as we very carefully navigate through these dimensions, I hope you're with me, you and your family and your friends and your dog and your cat and the house you live in and your guides and all of your past loved ones on the other side who incidentally are in their own dimension, you're trying to get them all to come right along with you. This is huge. This is kind of a big thing. By the time Pluto moves into Aquarius, finally, in 2025, we will solidly, firmly be in Aquarius, new dimension, no more things, holes to leap through, jumps to jump over. But in the meantime, back to the Earth and the Sun and the solar system traveling through space. You don't feel it because of the spin of the Earth, but it's moving at a million miles plus an hour in our hours. And as we're hurtling through space, we're actually hurtling right now through multi dimensions, moving towards our next step. I hope you're getting the visuals here. There was a time in my readings, because I, I read it for a lot of people. And there was a time in my readings where, like you, I felt literally like there was nothing there. Like I couldn't even connect to my own guides. I was like, what the heck is going on here? It was the weirdest thing I ever felt. And then my guides showed me the picture I just told you of. And then they did something interesting. They sh I work in a channel, okay, like a tube that goes out into space and my guides can come through that, okay? So it protects me and also brings their information through and information from your guides, which is where I get a lot of my information. Well, they showed me sitting in that tube and then they showed a whole bunch of bricks and blocks being thrown in that tube on top of my head, up as far as I could see. And I was like, oh, crap, is that why I'm having trouble connecting? And that's when they also showed me that each one of those bricks and blocks was literally another something that we had to move around as we're going through this dimensional shift to get where we need to be. And then I realized what's happening. We're literally moving through all different kinds of dimensions with all different kinds of densities not all of which are allowing you to get the information psychically that you need to do the work you do. So here's what they showed me to do. They literally took a big pitcher of water, went way up top and dumped the water down. And I watched the water, now this was just a schematic, it's not real, but it showed me what's happening. And they showed the water seeping through all the cracks and all the crevices and coming down and then nurturing me and pouring over me. And I realized it, that the guides are still there. The way to connect with them is still there, but the method has to be different because of the shift we're going through. It's not you, this isn't you, this isn't about you. It's about that dimensional shift. So once I could realize that the water was seeping through, I could track the water back. And as soon as I tracked it back, I had a path and I could connect with my guides. And when I made that connection, I widened it and widened it. And these days I have the same old channel back again I used to have, only it's a thousand times better because as we go through the dimensional shift, we're moving into a higher vibration. And in that higher vibration, guess what? We are all accessing our psychic abilities like we never have before. It's easy. So easy to connect, to see the people you love from the other side. 
So many, many, many people are doing that right now. And those are the people who are realizing the connection's still there. You just have to find the new way of locking into it. Did that help a little bit? It was profoundly clear. Okay. I love my guides. <laughs> yes. Okay. No, thank you so much. You're very, very welcome. And I think that was a lovely question to finish our evening with. Um, folks, this has been a joy. You folks are always joyful. You bring you bring love with you when you come to these sessions, and I feel it. So remember, if you have a question that I didn't get to, I a simple direct one, I will be glad to get to it. It won't be in as much depth as I've done here. I actually do complete readings here when I work with people, so you can see how the whole thing comes together. And I know you've got a lot out of we had we were able to talk about all of the signs indirectly through the questions that were asked. Everybody here got a little something, but if you want to ask that specific question and you're still here at the end, as long as it reaches me before 9 p.m. Eastern time tomorrow, I will be glad to answer it. And remember, I want your first name, where you're from, what you're grateful for, your sun sign. Now, if you don't know your sun sign, just give me your date of birth. I can figure the sun sign out. But I need your sun sign because I will work with this chart when I give you your answer. My guides are astrologers. It helps them. Thank you so much, folks. Have a wonderful remaining two days of the month. And I will see you again on February 19th. Good night. <laughs>